Jennifer Dykert. I'm the 4-H educator here in Fay County. And here is Mrs. Grimm. She invited us into her first grade classroom here at Dunbar Township Elementary. Um, anything that you'd like to say about what you've been doing with Ag Literacy Week? We're glad you could come today and read this story. We were all listening this story, learning about soybeans, and we're ready to do our thank you letter for our farmers. Great. Thank you again. Uh, looking forward to reading the book with the, with the students and doing some activities to learn more about agriculture. We're going to talk about agriculture and read a book. Okay? So my name is Jennifer Dykert, and I am the 4-H educator in Fayette County. See my? Like St. Patrick's Day, I have a clover, right? Uh -huh. Anybody heard of 4-H before? Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about 4-H? They garden. They garden. Good. What else do they do? Anybody in 4-H? So with 4-H, we have all kinds of clubs for kids. So if you're interested in something like robotics, if you want to learn how to build and code a robot, or you like to garden and grow things, maybe animals, if you have a dog that you want to teach how to um, do what you say with agility and obedience and grooming and tricks, yeah. We have a creative arts club. Put hands down for a minute, okay? Um, we have a creative arts club if you like to draw and then uh, we have different animal clubs like horses if you want to learn about horses. So those are some things that we do with 4-H and it's after school and you go with other groups of kids and you learn about those things through our volunteers. So in your classroom packet with your teacher there's a list of all the clubs in Fayette County. I think there's almost 30 different clubs to choose from and you can join any of those clubs, okay? On the other side of that paper, there's a thing called the 4-H Pledge. Before we start, do you have a question? I want to be in the garden club. Okay, we can talk after, okay? I'll let you know the details. All right, so there's a thing called the 4-H Pledge. Have you ever heard that word before, pledge? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I where? You pledge allegiance every morning, don't you? Yeah, yeah to the flag. So with 4-H, there are some things that we pledge, that we promise and vow to do, and it's called the 4-H Pledge. So I have a 4-H flag, and today I'm going to teach you the 4-H Pledge. And there are some very simple hand motions for you to do, okay? So as we are reading our story today and you're doing activities during Ag Literacy Week, you can think about 4-H and what those promises are, okay? Um, so are you ready? Yes. All right, you're going to repeat after me, okay? I pledge my head, I pledge my head to clearer thinking. To clearer thinking. I, pledge my heart I pledge my heart to greater loyalty. To greater loyalty. I pledge my hands, pledge my hands to larger service. To larger service. And I pledge my health to better living, to better living for my club, for my, club my, community, my community, my country, my country and my world. So today we're going to use our head, our hearts, our hands and our health and we're going to learn about agriculture and we're going to learn what 4-H is all about. Okay? Are you ready? All right. So. We're going to start out this week, or today, by reading a book. And this one is called My Family's Soybean Farm. Anybody know about soybeans? No. No? no. Well, we're going to learn about them, so that's okay. So one thing, there are going to be some words in here that, other words like soybeans, that you might not know what they mean. So in the back of the book, there is a thing called the glossary. Have you ever looked at a glossary in a book yeah. before? So this is the place where it will tell you the word and what it means so that when we read the story, you'll understand what we're trying to talk about, okay? So I'm going to talk about a few words, and you can repeat them if you want to say them, because some of them are fun to say, and some of them you might not have ever heard before. Like this first one, have you heard of an aphid? Yes. You did? No. Can you say that word? Aphid. Aphid, yeah. So an aphid is a tiny bug that can damage crops. The next word we want to talk about is biodiesel. Bio 
Biodiesel. Yeah, biodiesel, that's fuel that can be made from soybeans and used in diesel engines. So there's actually a fuel made from plants. The next word is combine. Combine. Yeah, that's an interesting word, isn't it? So a combine is a machine that harvests crops. And there's that word crop. Crops. What is crop? Anybody know? What do you know? A crop is like a plant, a plant I planted. A plant that you planted, yep. But it's a little bit special. What's it used for? Eating. Eating, right. So crops are plants that are used for food. So roses and daisies, we don't eat those, right? So they're plants, but they're not crops. What's an example of a crop? What do you think? What's a plant that we eat? Go ahead. Bread. Bread, Bread comes from Bread. wheat. Yes. What's another crop? Carrots. Carrots. Yes, carrots are crops. Tomatoes. Tomatoes are crops. Um, um, What's a plant that we eat? There's corn that grows too. Cool. You got it. Corn. One more. Lettuce. Lettuce. Yes, those are all crops. One more. Strawberries. I love strawberries. It's almost that time. Okay, the next word is crop rotation. Can you say that? Crop rotation. Yeah, so that means planting different crops each year. So it's not the same plant that you put in, the same seed. We're going to rotate and we're going to talk about that cycle. And here's a word that I bet you heard, drones. Drones. Yeah. Do we know what a drone is? Yeah. What do we know? Something that it flies in the air. It does. It flies in the air. And it's a remote control robot, right? So it flies in the air. And what's something special that it can do? What? You forget? That's okay. What, do, what, does a, what can a drone do? It can record. It can record and it can take pictures, right? pictures and videos. So there's not a pilot that's in this drone, but you can control it from the ground and fly it above and it has a camera. Does anybody watch sports on TV, yeah. like football? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you know how it can go right down in and zoom on the quarterback? Yeah, those are drones, but we can use those in agriculture too. So if we want to check on the fields, then you can use a drone and then you don't have to walk as far. The next word I want to talk about is farmer. Yeah, we know what a farmer is, right? Yeah. What's a farmer do? What's a farmer do? Way in the back. You want help? All right, farmer here in the pink. That's, that's it takes care of animals? Takes care of animals, yeah. So they raise animals and plants that we use for food. All right, and then we have the word fuel. So, yep, fuel is a material that produces heat or power, like gasoline, right. All right, a few more words and then we get to start our story. So we have GPS. GPS. Yeah, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah, what, what do you know about GPS? Go ahead. It is, you can track. You can see where you're going. So it stands for Global Positioning System. And it's a network of satellites that can communicate with receivers to show you what's going on on the ground and where your exact location is. All right, another word, harvest. Harvest. Yeah, that means to gather your crops. And livestock, who knows what livestock means? Mm -hmm. Not quite sure? So livestock, those are farm animals that include cattle and hogs, sheep, goats, poultry, and others. Oh, hogs. Cow. Cows are like cattle and hogs are like hogs. pigs. You got it. And our last word is nutrients. So nutrients, that's something that plants, animals, and people need to live and grow. Do you have a question? You're just growing. Yes. yes, good. All right, so the next thing I want to do is introduce you to two people. So there is the author. What's an author? 
Somebody who writes the story. Someone who writes the story, yeah. So our author is Kate, Katie Olthoff. That it's not me. I did not write the story. <laughs> I hope you did. <laughs> I'm going to read the story. I'm the reader. She's the author. All right. So Katie, growing up, Katie dreamed of following in the step, footsteps of authors like Laura Ingalls Wilder, Lucy Maud Montgomery, and Louisa May Alcott who wrote fiction based on everyday life. After marrying a farmer and learning more about agriculture, Katie began writing mostly nonfiction articles and books about farming, and she has written for many different agriculture organizations and publications. She and her husband have three children and live on a turkey farm in central Iowa with their cat Snuggles and their beagle Charlie. So this is Katie. And now this guy, his name is Joe Hawks, and he is the illustrator. What's that mean? He's the a person who makes the pictures. A person who draws the pictures. Very good. So you can see he has a pencil here because he likes to draw. So Joe Hawks was born with a spade in one hand and a pencil in the other. He was raised on an Iowa farm where he spent his days vanquishing thistles and sketching critters. Today, as an artist, he moved to town, but he's still inspired by rows of corn and fluffy clouds over cow pastures. Joe has illustrated more than a dozen books, including Zoe's Hiding Place and Farmer Gary's Birthday Adventure. So are we, are we ready to start the story? Yeah. All right, I'm excited. So this story is called My Family Soybean Farm. Hi, I'm Alexander, and my parents are farmers. We live on a farm where we raise pigs, corn, and soybeans. Can you see back there? Yeah. All right. We plant the soybeans in the spring. Our tractor pulls a planter and the planter drops soybean seeds into the soil. Inside the tractor, computers keep track of where the seeds are planted. Our tractors have GPS technology. They can even steer themselves. Pretty cool. They know where to go. A few days later, seeds sprout and soybean plants begin growing. All plants need sunlight and water. So here you can see where the soybean seed and it starts to sprout. So it creates the roots and the roots gather the water and the nutrient. And then the stem supports the plant and the leaves and then it, the leaves absorb the sunlight. Soybean plants have many tiny white or purple flowers. The flowers are about the size of your pinky fingernail. Everybody show me your pinky. That's all as big as the flowers are, your fingernail. That's pretty tiny. Yeah. So then after the flowers wilt, Pods begin to grow. The pods are the fruit of the soybean plant. Each pod usually has three beans inside. The beans are the seeds. They are harvested and used for other purposes, like food for humans or animals. Yes. Not right out of the garden, not right out of the field. But if you want to steam them or boil them, and then you can eat them, and they're called edamame beans. <gasps> they're pretty good. We're gonna go home. I'm gonna try them. All right. In the summer, we use remote controlled drones to check our soybeans. The drones fly over the fields and take pictures or videos of the soybean plants. We check to make sure our soybean plants are healthy. 
Bugs, weeds, and fungi can damage our soybeans. See the brown spots? So you didn't have to walk all over there. You can use your drone to take pictures and see if there's any damage. We also walk through our fields to check the soybean plants. This is called crop scouting. Uh-oh, these soybean plants have been damaged by aphids. Remember what aphids are? Yeah. yeah. What are they? Little teeny bugs. Yeah, they're the little bugs. Ladybugs eat aphids. Oh, they do, okay. Yeah, they do. We use a safe, gentle bug spray to get rid of the harmful bugs. So here you can see this tractor and it's spraying the fields to help protect the soybeans. In the fall, the soybean plants finish growing. When the soybean pods are dry and hard, we harvest them. There are several steps to remove the soybeans from the field. In the past, farmers had to do each part separately. But our combine does all the steps. Do you remember that word? Combine. combine, yeah. So that's a machine that will do everything for them. So it cuts the stem. It takes the plants inside the machine. It cracks the pods and separates the beans from the rest of the soybean plant. So instead of the farmer having to do that all by hand, they have a machine to do that. The beans are put in wagons and taken to grain bins. The grain bins keep the soybeans dry until we sell them. We sell our soybeans to a processor. The processor makes the beans into food for animals. Soybeans have a lot of protein in them. Protein helps animals grow. Our pigs eat food that contains crushed soybeans. Turkeys, chickens, cattle, and fish also eat food made with soybeans. Charlie's pet food even has soybeans in it. Who's Charlie? The dog. Remember, the author has a dog named Charlie. Yeah. Yep. Farmers in the United States grow a lot of soybeans. Some of the soybeans are used by American farmers and processors. But processors also sell our soybeans to farmers around the world to feed livestock. Barges and trains take soybeans to countries like Mexico and China. That's pretty far, huh? China. Most soybeans are used for livestock food, but we eat food made from soybeans too. Have you ever tried soy sauce? Yes. yes. <gasps> oh, when have you had soy sauce? What do you eat with soy sauce? Green beans. Green beans? Yeah, what else? Sushi, yes, that's my favorite. Rice with soy sauce. Yep, sushi, yeah. Chinese food, yes. Rice, very good. Soy sauce is good, right? It's made from soybeans and it's delicious. Oil from soybeans can be made into cooking oil or into biodiesel fuel oil. Soybeans are also used to make ink, crayons, and glue. What? Who uses crayons in first grade? Yeah, your crayons were made with soybeans. Right, they don't taste good. <laughs> All right, so next year we will grow corn in this field instead of soybeans. That's called crop rotation. So remember, we planted our beans, and you grow your beans, and then you harvest your beans. Let's look up here, girls. Then winter comes, and then the next year we're going to plant corn. And we're going to grow corn, 
And then the corn is ready to harvest. And we have another winter. And after that winter, we're going to plant our beans again. Exactly. It keeps rotating, right? And by rotating or switching crops, that keeps our soil healthy. Right. And plants need nutrients just like we do. Corn and soybeans use different nutrients and different amounts. The roots of the plants get the nutrients from the soil. Rotating crops keeps our soil from running out of the right balance of nutrients. So Alexander says that his mom and dad are farmers, his grandparents were farmers, and his great-grandparents were farmers. What? Are you serious? And he's a farmer. And when he grows up, he wants to be a farmer just like them. What? So maybe someday you'll get to eat food and use products made from the soybeans grown on his family soybean farm. My family's farm. All right. What do you think? Tell me something that you learned. <laughs> what was something you learned that you didn't know before we read the story? Soybean, soy sauce is made from soybeans. Yes, what else? Go ahead. Crayons are made from soybeans. Was that your answer? Yeah. What do you think? I never even knew soybeans even existed. <laughs> <laughs> I know one of you said Daisy. Yes. That's my name. That's your name. Well, nice to meet you, Daisy. What did you learn? Daisy Golden, right here. She has golden. You forgot? So golden. All right. So, so what? this is my jar of soybeans that came from a local yeah, farmer. Okay. So what you're going to do in your teacher, teacher's packet, I gave everybody a soybean. So what you're going to be able to do is to see your own soybean sprout. So what were those two things that soybeans need to grow? Water. Go ahead. At my house, dirt. At my grandma's house, I planted some, some, some seeds. Yes. And I think some of them were soybeans. Oh, nice. But what do soybeans need to grow? Sunlight. Sunlight and? Water. Water, right. So what I did, you don't really need soil right away. So I'm, I gave you a piece of paper towel, and you're going to soak that paper towel in water and fold it up. And then you'll put the soybean on top of the paper towel and put it into a Ziploc sandwich bag. Okay. And then what you can do, you can tape it to the window so that that bean will get sunlight. And then it will start to sprout. Okay? And you'll have to let me know what happens. All right? All right, so I'm the fine. other thing that's included in your teacher pack is an ag mag, okay? And this comes from the American Farm Bureau, and they make ag, ba ag mags for all different topics, but this one is all about soybeans. All right, so you'll be able to look through this and either with your teacher or you could take it home and look at it at home. But a couple things I wanted to point out. The first one is, do you see this map down here? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that's a map of the United States, right? Of America. That's good. Yes. All right, so the states are in different colors. Who remembers what state our author and illustrator were from? Does America. anybody remember that? Not China, China. a state. Oh, you forget? States of America. The states of America, but which one? Mexico. No. Nope. I know. I know. Started with an I. I South. No. South America. Yes. Is that okay if she goes to the restroom? One more guess. Iowa. Iowa. Nope. Iowa. 
All right, they were from Iowa. So Iowa is this green state right in the middle. Can we go to so Iowa? what it means, well, it's a far way. But it, because it's green, it means that in Iowa, they grow between 8 and 10 million acres of soybeans. What? Yeah. So what state do we live in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. right. So Pennsylvania is over here and we are orange. So in Pennsylvania, we grow between 800 and a hundred, no, let me check that out. Between 500 and 700,000 acres of soybeans. What? Yeah. What? So, so we, yeah, we grow less. We don't grow as much as Iowa, but we still grow a lot of soybeans. So let's look in here. Another thing that I wanted to point out to you. It's like a newspaper. It is like a newspaper. So we have some super soybean facts. All right. So let's see what this one says here. Soybeans sprout and small plants begin to grow in four to seven days after planting. So when you take your soybean and you put it in your Ziploc bag with water and put sunlight on it, in four days you should start to see it sprout. Okay? So you let me know if that works. I need the number first. So another thing is it takes approximately 180,000 soybean seeds to plant one acre. That's a lot of soybeans. Wow. So remember that tractor that was planting all the seeds? That's what he was doing, 180,000 per acre. But guess what? One acre of soybeans will make over 82,000 crayons. Is that enough crayons for first grade at Dunbar Township? Yeah. Is it enough crayons for all grades at Dunbar Township? Yeah, that's a lot of soybeans and a lot of crayons. Hi, how are you? Taylor, you drop on this side and just like spread you through us. So. Well, I think this is our favorite one of the day. No, no offense to the librarians. No offense to anyone else. Uh, we kind of battled over who was going to read this one. So, um, 4-H is yeah, so, so special. Yeah, it's, 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 the 4-H also has a good citizen club. And I'll let Jennifer Leiker uh, tell you about that. So it is Pennsylvania 4-H week, uh, March 13th through the 19th, 2022. Whereas the county of Fayette, in the 4-H clubs, local schools, and all those that provide 4-H to the youth of Fayette County and the more, more than 5 million youth that take part in 4-H programs nationwide. And whereas the Fayette County Co Cooperative Extension System conducts 4-H programs through the state land-grant universities with the mission to help young people acquire knowledge, develop life skills, and form attitudes which will help them become self-directing, productive members of society. And whereas 4-H addresses issues facing youth wherever they, wherever they live, in inner cities, suburbs, and rural communities, that help break barriers by focusing on learning by doing. Whereas 4-H builds youth's self-esteem, leadership, and citizenship skills, and focuses on critical issues such as protecting the environment, and 4-H has programs on science and technology, nat natural resources, growing plants, caring for farm animals, career education, citizenship, and leadership. And whereas more than 3,000 youth are active in 4-H programs in Fayette County, and 4-H, and exciting, fun, after-school educational programs are available through county 4-H school enrichment programs. And whereas, more than 100 adult volunteers in Fayette County donate countless hours and effort each year preparing for and teaching our youth. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Fayette County Board of Commissioners, we do hereby proclaim the week of March 13th through 19th, 2022, as Pennsylvania 4-H Week, adopted this day, the 17th of March, 2022, 
is signed by the Fayette County Commissioners Dave Gore, Mr. CDs, and Scott Glenn. Anyone have something to say? Sure. Uh, well, I can touch a little bit on what Commissioner done. So we started a Fayette 4-H Good Citizens Club. Uh, so for the month of March, we met every week. And we have uh, 10 members of that club. And uh, Olivia and Riley are two of those. But we are learning what our local government does, um, the sense of community, and how we can help support our public servants and our elected officials and be good citizens. So um, Tuesday we toured the police department. Last week Commissioner Dunn came and spoke to our group. Um, and then we're also looking at the um, 17 sustainable uh, goals from the United Nations and the kids are going to pick which one they are passionate about um, and then create a poster that we will display at the Fayette County Fair. So that's our newest endeavor. We also have a couple of our older members, Kendra and Kenzie. Um, and they are, um, I can let them talk and at least say what member, what clubs they're part of. Okay, Kendra? I'm Kendra. I'm part of the New Horizons 4-H Club, Teen County Council, and Judging Club. Kenzie? I'm Kenzie. I am a part of New Horizons 4-H Club, Teen County Council, and 4-H Connects Club. I get to help mentor um, youth from 8 to 12 year olds in 4-H and 4-H Connects Club, and it's just a really good experience. So one of the misconceptions with 4-H is that we're all farmers and, and agriculture related, but it is quite a wide variety of youth development programs depending on what their interest is. So um, thank you so much for recognizing You're welcome. Us and their favorite part of the day was they got out of school to come. <laughs> 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 <laughs>